tonight we are in Richlands, North Carolina, and we're going to attend a 4-H meeting, and this is with the Carolina Riders Club. So this is a really dynamic club. I think you're going to enjoy the show. With us now is Taylor Dominesi, and Taylor has been in the 4-H program for a long time, and she's in college now. So we'll find out a little bit about all the things that she learned while she was in the program. So how old were you when you started? I was five when I started, and I'm now 19. And so you started right out a ball of fire and real dynamic? Yep. Uh-huh. That's what I heard. I heard that you were a little shy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how to socialize when I first joined 4-H, and that's helped me a lot because you have to be social in everything you do, and you can't be afraid to go speak to new people and make the new connections. All right. So when you came to 4-H, had you already been a horse rider? Yes, I got introduced through 4-H through my trainer. Okay, and tell us a little bit about that experience before you came here. Um, I was a very timid little girl. Even when I was riding, I wasn't very strong with my horse. So 4-H, I got introduced to 4-H so it could help me grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me a little bit about the things you've learned in 4-H through the years. 4-H um, has taught me to be a better person overall. It helps, it keeps you so busy that you don't have time to get into drinking or drugs or any of that normal teenage stuff that most parents have to worry about. I've learned how to get up, talk in front of people, not be nervous. Mm -hmm. um, it's helped me come out of my shell and find who I really am. And it's made so many connections that are going to help me throughout the rest of my life. And let me tell you, does it look good on a college resume to be in 4-H? We like to do elder cheer, which is making baskets for the elderly homes at Christmas time for those that don't get normal visitors. Mm -hmm. We've done Backpack for Heroes for the kids for that have parents overseas. We've done the Stuffed Animal Drive for the Children's Hospital. And Favorite Foods, which is always my favorite because you get to make a delicious dish and then after everybody's done, you get to eat everybody's food. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, so that's about public speaking. Public speaking has always been my passion, mm -hmm. which is hard coming from a shy girl. I've always been shy. So learning to get up and speak without your voice shaking or your legs jiggling and is helped me tremendously, especially since when you go to college, you always have to take a public speaking class. Mm -hmm. So you're already ahead in college from everybody else that has the phobia. And what, what's been the most meaningful thing that you think you've done in 4-H as far as, as giving back to the community and making um, you... Elder Cheer is always rewarding, especially after we make the baskets. If you have the opportunity to go actually give the baskets to the elder homes, yeah. they're always so appreciative. And you always, like, when you go in there and you see their face when you give them a basket and a blanket, and they're so surprised, and they're, it's so heartfelt to be like, yeah, somebody cares about you. You're not left out, I promise. Right. That's really touching. So, so now you're in college. I am. Tell us about that. Um, I'm in Purdue University as a freshman in agriculture engineering. So I'm staying in the ag field, which 4-H will always help me with. And collegiate 4-H is it's a lot like normal 4-H. We just have the opportunity to help out the younger people in the 4-H club so they can grow in to be the collegiate 4-H and teach future generations. Mm -hmm. And through the Collegiate 4-H, you make many connections that will help you out in future jobs. Right. Now, in your agricultural field, you do a lot with, with new things that would be of interest, you know, sustainable energy and yes. eco-friendly, you know, and tell us a little bit about what you're planning to do with that. Sustainable energy has always been out there, but it's been kind of feared for a long time because people are afraid of change. But through my program, we're exploring new clean energies, especially with water and electricity. So I'm hoping to get my degree so that I can go design these new buildings and get the word out there so people will understand more about what solar energy is and mm -hmm. new forms of wind energy, and they're not afraid of them. Right. Now, um, we're going to play horse bowl. Okay. I have a barn. How would I make, how would, give me one tip to make it um, ecologically friendly, maybe with water. You can have rain barrels. Mm hmm And so... You know, you, it's a nice summer day, you want to give your horse a bath. Instead of running the hose for 10 minutes straight, you can go get buckets of water out of your rain barrel and wash your horse. Very good. Very good. And so what college do you go to? Purdue University. Very nice. All right. And so you were accepted to Purdue pretty young? Yeah, I got an early acceptance letter, which was pretty rewarding. Mm -hmm. 
So an engineering field for a woman, that's a tough field to go into. Yeah, so. and especially at Purdue, the, the classes are very hard and they're very challenging, but it's much more rewarding when you pass the class and you get a good grade and you go, I did this. With us now is Chrissy Sulik from Jacksonville. And Chrissy is, is kind of a graduate of the 4-H club here in Richlands. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience as a 4-H'er. Well, I grew up in this program. Um, I joined when I was 14 years old and I got to take all the amazing field trips and I learned everything that I know about horses through this program. Um, I went on several field trips. I went out of state. We got to go camping on the Outer Banks and ride horses on the beach. That was probably my most memorable field trip. We got to see multi-million dollar barns and tour like national championships and um, I did all the community service. Um, yeah. And so tell me about your riding. I ride English. Mm -hmm. I did hunter jumper while I was in 4-H and I'm now doing dressage. Um, I learned from a pony that tried to buck me off and run away with me. That's what I grew up in 4-H with. To, um, I finally got my first real show horse and then I bought a baby at six months old. And I brought him up, we, me and my trainer brought him up from the ground up. Right, and so is that your dressage horse now? Mm -hmm. All right, That's nice. Him. So you, you went on to college, what did you do? I went to UNC Chapel Hill. I got my bachelor's in psychology and mm -hmm. I minored in history. Right. Um, and now I am at East Carolina University getting my master's in counseling. Okay. And I graduated in May, so I'm Good. almost there. Um, I'm doing my internship in the schools, so I've, I've stayed with the youth. I've done a lot of, all my jobs have been with the youth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping when I graduate to join an equine psychotherapy clinic, which is where you use horses to heal mental illnesses and disabilities and any problems anybody's having. That's really an amazing field. We went to um, Horsepower mm -hmm. and they had a little boy who was autistic and he could name every horse in the barn and everybody that participated in the program but he couldn't tell his, his mom his teacher's name from yeah. school for the whole year. So yeah. they do amazing things without a doubt. I volunteered while I was at Chapel Hill and um, those kinds of things mm -hmm. and it was really cool because you had these kids that couldn't walk mm -hmm. but they could ride. Right. Right, it's, it's amazing to be able to fly. Yeah. With us now is Brianna Mercer, and Brianna is from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. And she was part of the Carolina Riders 4-H program out of Onslow County. So can you tell us a little bit about that program and, and how old were you when you joined? Um, I joined the Carolina Riders when I was about eight or nine years old. And it started out, I went to a summer camp and I met one of the instructors who was one of the leaders for the program. And she kind of introduced me to it and um, it's probably one of the oldest 4-H programs that we have and for a long time it was the only one in Onslow County. Right and what has it meant to you to be part of 4-H all these years? Well from 4-H started like a long time ago and just to be a part of something that is that legendary is very important to me and it keeps like our local stuff businesses in order and it keeps all the local people together. Right and so part of 4-H is is learning about the horse and how to ride and care for it and, mm -hmm. and there are other programs too that they offered. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's in the equine program other than riding? Um, there's barn management, there's vet care, there's um, you can do a riding instructor, you can just manage the farm, you can just farm horses, you can breed horses. and So it kind of gives you a little taste of all those different things so you can decide yeah. what you want to be when you grow up. Yep. Okay and how long were you in the program? Um, I was in the program for 12 years, I believe, 12 years, yeah. Okay, and so what do you do now? Um, I'm a current student at Martin Community College and I am going for an associate in equine technology. Mm -hmm. And after I graduate here, which will be May 2015, um, I will be going to Carteret Community College to continue my education and go on and do radiology. On people? Yes, ma'am. Right, okay, that's good. And as a show person in 4-H, what and all did you accomplish in the show world? I made a lot of connections with 4-H because I wouldn't have met the trainer I have now which took me to the quarter horse shows. I wouldn't have met her without 4-H and I wouldn't have made the connections with the trainer to get me to the school and basically I wouldn't probably wouldn't be here if right. I didn't have 4-H. And did, didn't you compete in the quarter horse world? Yes ma'am. And I how did. did you do in that? Um, I qualified a couple years ago to go to the Novice World Championships in Murfreesboro, Tennessee and we did decent there. We didn't win or anything, but we did all right. And right. that was my biggest accomplishment. But um, I show locally all the time, so. 
Well, going to the worlds and being qualified is a big yeah. accomplishment because not many people <laughs> could say that, that's for sure. All right. So your future plans in the equine industry? My future plans are to basically have the equine industry be my hobby on the side. I don't necessarily want to my whole lifestyle to be equine. I want to be able to go out and do different things during the week and just show my horses on the weekend. All right. All right. Well, thank you for spending some time thank with us. Thank you. Stay tuned. Modern Horseman TV will be right back. If you're interested in a career working with horses, then Martin Community College is the place for you. MCC's equine technology program is the only one offered among North Carolina's 58 community colleges. The program is management oriented with classes in breeding, nutrition, training, riding, equine health, and more. Graduates can leave MCC prepared to work in recreational and racing barns, breed to discipline oriented farms, or assistant farm management. For more information, contact Martin Community College today. With me now is Kaylin Cuneo from Richlands, North Carolina. Kaylin is also in the Carolina Riders 4-H program out of Onslow County. So tell us a little bit about the program and how old you were when you started. Well, I started it when I was 16, um, which is kind of a bummer because I didn't really get the benefit of being in it my whole life like a lot of the other kids were. Um, we met once or twice a week and did a bunch of things like horse bowl and uh, hippology. What exactly is a horse bowl? Um, horse bowl is where you go, and it's kind of like Jeopardy, mm -hmm. uh, but you ask you're asked questions um, regarding like anatomy, um, physiology, you like fly systems, um, anything and everything regarding horses. Okay. And what is hippology? Um, hippology means the study of horses. Uh, so basically, along the same thing. Uh, the only thing is that it's like a written test. You uh, answer some questions and it's kind of like a high school exam mm -hmm. and then you're done and you get placed. And okay. So what do you think that 4-H has given you as far as, as the things you've learned and, and made you a person you are today? Well, it's helped me to be better at public speaking. Um, I'm terrible at talking to people and I'm better prepared for giving presentations because of it. Um, I'm more rounded and I'm more knowledgeable. I want to continue relatively my whole life. Um, I intend to in the horse industry. And this has really provided me with a lot of experience and knowledge to take with me. Okay. And what kind of disciplines do you show in? Um, I do combined training, um, which is a jumper round and then a dressage test, um, as well as I started two years ago with actually going to certified um, eventing trials, mm -hmm. uh, which is the dressage, the stadium jumper round, and the cross country event. Okay. And which one of those three do you like the best? Definitely the cross country. I would think that would be yeah. the best one for sure. <laughs> um, I'm very much an adrenaline junkie, mm -hmm. so the fact of going fast and going high is really exciting. Um, but I also really like the dressage for like the tactical movements, um, mm -hmm. that really interest me. All right, so what are your goals with the combined training? Um, are you going to be a U.S. Olympic athlete? I, <laughs> <laughs> I would really like to be. Um, aspiring. All right. <laughs> One day, maybe. All right. So you're, you're a student here at Martin Community? Yes. So what do you plan to do with this part of your education? Um, well, this part is going to attribute to my uh, training program. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm fully done with school, I want to open up my own barn and training business and uh, special, specialize in eventing, um, but I'm up for broadening my horizons and okay. being more well-rounded in the riding aspect. Are you going to try to stay here in North Carolina? Because um, eventing is a big sport. That's a worldwide yeah, thing. So. Uh, well, I'll have to travel a lot and everything, but I think I'm going to have a home base in North Carolina probably. Very good. All right, if there's folks out there watching that are kind of on the fence about kids in 4-H and maybe becoming a 4-H leader, what kind of advice would you give them? I would definitely say to do it. Um, like I said, I didn't get the benefit of being in it my whole life, and uh, starting it early, you just get that much more knowledge and experience and opportunities, and you get to go and do so many things and see so many things. And um, I've met so many people through 4-H that I never would have met and a lot of them I've seen again through being at school here mm -hmm. uh, and 
it's a really, really good experience. And in the, the three-day eventing and the combined training, I, I understand you've got some pretty big accomplishments there, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the combined training, I've won state and regional championships a couple times um, through 4-H, and then uh, I've done fairly decently at the actual trials, and I have several um, cert or, uh, circuit championships for combined training mm -hmm. and um, I actually had the opportunity to do an internship at the school here this semester or this summer and trained one of the horses out here that's been here for a while and took him to his first ever outing off the property trial and he did amazing Fantastic. got second place in his division good good yeah. well that's a big testament to your training abilities for yeah. sure awesome yeah. All right, well, thanks for spending some time with of us Of course, today. thanks. For I call this meeting of Carolina Riders to order. Will we all rise, remove our hats, and say the pledges? 4-H pledge. Katie, do you want to lead us in our 4-H pledge? Sure. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands for larger service, and my health for better living. Um, I'd like to talk to everybody tonight about <coughs> horse vital signs. Who knows what vital signs are? Alyssa? Um, there are horses, respiration, pulse, um, temperature, and <coughs> Well, there's actually capillary refill time is a vital, um, checking for dehydration. Um, they're a marker. They, they indicate to us the state of health of our horse. Under normal circumstances, for all of us horse bowlers and for everybody, what's a normal resting temperature for a horse? 99.5 to 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, so that's a normal temperature. What if it's 105 degrees outside and you just took your horse on a trail ride? Do we expect that to be the temperature range? No. It'll be, It'll be higher, higher, right? And will the horse still be healthy and normal? Yes. 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 Okay. So there's exceptions and it's learning to recognize. How many of you have ever physically taken your horse's temperature? Physically done. I've gone out, walked up there, taken it. Um, you what? You've been next to somebody doing it. Alyssa, you've done it, okay? Um, there's two types of, and you can turn to the first page, turn to the back of the first page. There's two types of ways to take um, a temperature. You can either do the old-fashioned way, which I still prefer, and I'll tell you why. Because of a string and a clothespin. When you take a horse's temperature, First of all, most of the time when we take it, they don't feel real well, right? Most of the time, we're taking it because they don't feel good. So they're liable to be grouchy and unpredictable, um, especially if they're colicky or, you know, something major wrong. So with this method, this is an old mercury, mercury might be forbidden now, I don't know. It's an old thermometer. And you start and you shake it down, make sure that it's good, and make sure that your bracelet doesn't shake off. Um, and check to make sure it's, it's down below the point where we're going to read it. You'll dip it in some Vaseline. You can dip it in any kind of a lubricant, and us old timers will spit on it. Anything that will lubricate it, okay? You walk up to the back of the horse. That is how you normally would get there. Pull their tail to the side, stand completely beside their hip, lay your hand over their tail, over their hindquarters, and insert it. And you want to insert it slightly down, because that's the angle that the colon travels. Not down, down, but just in and slightly down. How far to insert it? Well, bury it pretty much. You're going to leave just a little tip sticking out. In the old days, before they had rings on them and strings, you either had to stand there for three minutes, and sometimes that wasn't a great plan. Um, or, they, I mean, there's stories, many stories, of the horse would go, 
like what happened, you know, and then go down in. So then you'd have to go in fishing, not too fun. Or what happens when you stimulate that area, it goes sliding out, okay? It'll they'll, um, make manure and it'll come out. So they came up with the brilliant idea of, you know, push it in and then attach this to the tail hair and then you can walk away. And you don't have to stay in there the whole time. And so not only did it keep you safe, it just kept everything better. Um, and we can practice that. Like I said, it's a little bit wet tonight and, and just not real conducive. But, um, and then when it comes out, you have to read it. And many of these are hard to read. Um, on a good day, they're hard to read. So when you're worried about your horse or when the sun is shining or when it's dark, there's a lot of challenges to reading these. Does anybody know how long you need to leave it in? Peyton? Give you a hint, you said it. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. That's right. So that's a while. Then you bring it out and you, you read it. And you know, I've seen these go up to 106, 108, and that was the actual temperature of the horse. Now, if it gets that high, you've got a sick horse. That horse has a fever, right? The other option, and, and probably the more modern technology, is a digital thermometer. And these, you can push them, they come on, you stick it in, and sometimes in 15 or 20 seconds they'll beep and you can read them. Again, you have to stay there. With this one, it can pretty much be comfortable for the horse because it's in and, and there's nothing protruding that, that's bothersome. Um, but anyway, we have digital thermometers. Now, when should you take a horse's temperature? Once a day. Once a day? Maybe. Most people don't. Peyton? Twice a year. Twice a year? If there's a sign of problems. Yeah, most of us first take their temperature when they either stop eating, they're not feeling well, there's something going on. But it's a really good plan if you'll go, and, and we're going to practice this, we're all going to go do this, and we're going to go take temperatures. This gorgeous piece of jewelry that I'm wearing was made by Alyssa McCoy, and Alyssa is 13, 14. 14. She began her business when she was 11, and you can order pieces just like this with your horse's hair. So let's see what Alyssa has to say about her business. Hi. Hey. Tell us a little bit about what you do. So basically, I take hair, beads, metal, suede, and various other materials, and I create pieces of jewelry out of them. I make necklaces, bracelets, keychains, earrings, and zipper pulls. Okay, and so you, tell me about the different designs that you do. I see some have beads and some have little charms on them. Okay, so I'll start with the braids okay. because they're the basic part of any mm -hmm. piece I make here. Um, this is a basic or classic flat braid. It uses three strands and it's pretty much the braid you'll see in anyone's hair. Right. You find it everywhere. Right. This piece, however, has a completely different braid. It has four strands, and it's called a four-strand round braid. Mm -hmm. um, it creates a rope-like design, and if you, you see here, if you use two colors, it creates a stripe pattern. Right. Your workmanship is incredible. These braids are so tight and so skillfully done. You can tell that you've done lots and lots of them by now. <laughs> yes. So if, if people want to order a product from you, I can not only use my horse's own hair, but I can choose the color beads or the type beads or the pendants or whatever I want you to do to suit my taste. Yes, I can. And okay. if you see something you like, but we don't have it, we will be happy to order it for you. Okay. And you were telling me that you do something really special with part of your profits, so you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I started this business with the idea of funding an SPCA-type horse rescue in Jacksonville, North Carolina. So 10% of the proceeds go into a special saving account just for that mm -hmm. purpose. And then I also send 10% of the proceeds to my OPA, which 
fun fact, Opa means great grandfather in German. Right. So I send 10% to him and he matches it dollar for dollar to put in a savings account for college. That's a really good idea. Yep. And so you, people have, you can order this from you on a website or a Facebook page? Yes, I do have a Facebook fan page. Okay. Um, it is under the name Alyssa's Horsehair Jewelry, mm -hmm. and I'm also going to be starting an Etsy soon. Okay. Hello, my name is Alyssa McCoy on a horse called Mojo. I decided to become a three-day eventer because it's really fun. It gives you a bit of freedom as well as a lot of structure because dressage, which is kind of like dancing on horseback, you learn how to teach the horse how to do certain very complex movements and you have to remember the course. But when you do it right, it comes out really pretty. Um, stadium jumping is basically jumping in a ring like this, but it's timed and it's fast. The jumps can get very high and very wide, and it's really, really fun. <laughs> and cross country, well, that's a whole nother segment in of itself. But the short version is that you get to go and run through the woods on horseback, going really fast and jumping over natural jumps like logs and ditches and a whole bunch of other really interesting and weird jumps at times. It's really fun.